in general, rare diseases, we understand the genetics or the underlying genetic lesions uh, there in many cases. And so with respect to the different flavors of RNA therapeutics, there's a couple. There's sort of a replacement approach where you're replacing a gene that may be lost or, or mutated in such a way. There's other genes, this is probably more the category that DTX focuses on, where there's uh, mutations that drive, you know, an aberrant function or, or you know, we call them gain of function mutations. Um, and the therapeutic goal is to eliminate the expression of those genes. And there's a flavor called siRNA therapeutics, which does just that. It eliminates the expression uh, of genes and, and specifically disease causing uh, lesions in our case. Charcomery tooth, uh, one end, it's a peripheral neuropathy driven by an extra copy of a gene called PMP22. And so what happens with PMP22 is it's normally expressed in your Schwann cells. Your Schwann cells are really important for myelinating axons in your peripheral nervous system. And the importance of myelination of axons is, is insulation of the axons. So you could think of it as the, um, you know, uh, that, that material that goes around an electrical cord, it ensures that you get rapid transmission of these nerve signals. And when you have too much of this PMP22 gene, it leads to dysmyelination of axons. And in patients that expresses itself by loss of strength, loss of sensation in the arms and legs, these patients have trouble uh, with balance, coordination. They have something called foot drop due to loss of muscle tone um, in the legs that can lead to surgeries to reform their feet, uh, challenges like navigating sidewalk curbs or getting up steps. Uh, we have a picture in our, our pitch deck of someone kind of being piggybacked up the stairs because they have challenge, challenges with the steps. In the hands, it's, it's very similar uh, phenotype, like gripping things, buttoning coats, zipping jackets, um, holding a knife and fork are all challenges for these patients. Uh, it's a genetic duplication of a gene. So instead of two copies of PMP22, you have three copies of PMP22. And when you think about an siRNA therapeutic, you're trying to inhibit the expression of a gene. And so the siRNA modality is suited perfectly to attenuate the expression of, of gene expression. Um, you know, with respect to some of the exciting data that we've generated, we we work on a mouse model of the disease. It's called a C3 uh, mouse. It it faithfully recapitulates almost all aspects of the human condition. And so what I mean by that is, you know, from birth, these mice have issues with nerve conduction velocities. That's how we measure uh, neurotransmission, both in mice and patients. They have dysmyelination and they have challenges with coordination, agility, walking across a beam uh, is, is how we usually measure our grip strength. And so even in a, a mode where the disease is advanced in the, the mice, when you restore PMP22 expression back to normal, you can uh, reverse the disease. So not only do you get remyelination of axons, you get um, increased strength and you can take a mouse that you know prior to treatment uh, was falling off a balance beam or had, you know, 30 or 40 percent reduced uh, muscle mass relative to a wild type animal. And you can get it, um, you know, to, to look indistinguishable from a wild type uh, mouse. So, you know, and that's been just the concept of rep repressing the expression of the gene has been, uh, you know, validated to reverse the disease across a number of different academic groups as well as ours. Uh, I think the difference with, with the DTX technology is now there's a, a viable and uh, it seems reasonably safe way um, to get delivery of this therapeutic um, uh, to the Schwann cells to repress gene expression. We're uh, kind of in, in the midst of completing our repeat dose GLP toxicology studies. And so once we uh, complete those uh, sort of the middle of this summer, We'll, we'll try to file, file uh, an IND application uh, in the fourth quarter, early fourth quarter of this year. And that should enable us to go into the clinic uh, by the end of this year, if not early next year. And so we'll run single and multi-dose uh, trials 
in patients uh, beginning next year uh, with, with the hopes of not only generating uh, safety uh, data, which will be the primary mission of, of the first set of studies, but also gaining evidence that we can suppress the gene in patients. Uh, we can do biopsies in the clinic, and then we can uh, study over you know, a, a, a period of time whether or not there's evidence of remyelination of axons through um, electrophysiology. There's, there's, there's ways to measure neurotransmission. So we're hopefully about a year from, a little bit less than a year from you know, dosing our first patient.